Good morning, uh, everybody. <coughs> Hope uh, you have worked out uh, the problems which I had done in the yesterday's class. Please also go through the other problems that are available in some standard textbooks. I try to solve it. Almost in all the problems, we have to adopt the same procedure. Uh, so far, I have covered the problems on uh, single reinforced simply supported beams, then cantilever beams, rectangular cantilever beams. Then I covered the uh, doubly reinforced beams. So, three types of beams have been uh, covered and today I am going to cover two problems. I am going to work out a problem on T beam and later I am going to work out a problem on L beam. Both these beams uh, which I am going to cover in the today's class, they are known as the flanged beams. <coughs> so far all the three problems which we discussed were rectangular beams. So, in this class whatever I am covering is about the design of flanged beams. And I think that will be the last class of mine where I have covered uh, unit 3 and unit 4. Later on my colleagues from uh, C. J. Chamraja College of Engineering will be continuing from the next class onwards. So, now coming back to this problems which are which I was talking about. So, I am going to now dictate the problem, read out the problem so that you can note down the problem. A T beam slab floor of an office a T beam slab floor of an office comprises of a slab 150 mm thick spanning between ribs spaced at 3 meter centers. He says that there are ribs or several T beams which are spaced at every 3 meters. I am going to write this sketch later and these T beams, these beams are going to support the slab. So, whatever the load on the slab is there that is going to get transferred to these beams. The beams are at 3 meters center to center. The effective span of the beam is 8 meters. The live load on the floor is 4 kilo Newton per meter square. It means you have to transfer the load from the slab to the beam. The live load on the floor slab is given. Once again, I will repeat the problem. A T beam slab floor and office slab floor of an office comprises of a slab 150 mm thick spanning between ribs spaced at 3 meter centers. The effective span of the beam is 8 meters. The live load acting on the slab floor is 4 kilo Newton per meter square using M 20 grade concrete and a fee 4 on 5 steel design one of the intermediate T beam. So, now before I go to the data part, I am going to now explain the nature of the problem you have to tackle with the help of this sketch. So, this is a hall of uh, 8 meters. The other span, let us not bother about it. In this span, just you understand that there are several beams, maybe 4 base or it may be n number of base, nothing has been mentioned about the number of base. Now, if you write the section you can understand the monolithic construction of the slab and beam. Whatever I have written here is the plan, whatever I have written here is the plan whereas, this is the section I have taken. So, here the slab is being supported on series of beams. Since the beam and the slab has been monolithically constructed, it is known as a flanged beam. A part of the flange, a part of the flange acts as the 
a part of the slab acts as the flange of the beam. So, all these things have been casted monolithically. So, the compression area of this has enhanced which helps in taking care of the compressive stresses that is the beauty of this flanged beams. So, this is the problem which I am talking about where the value of L is equal to 8 meters already I have written this. So, the value of the span is given as 8 meters the spacing of the T beam is 3 meter center to center. means at every 3 meter there is a beam. So, whatever the load acting on this slab gets transferred to this beam. Then further he also says the slab thickness further in the problem it has mentioned that the slab thickness as 150 mm. So, D f the slab thickness here afterwards is going to be called as the flange thickness is nothing but equal to 150 mm. Now, you have to design the T beam of effective span 8 meters. So, this is the T beam. So, if you just take a section here, then you can see this T beam where you have got the slab of thickness D f, this is the slab and this is the web of the beam. So, the slab is extending in both the directions. So, your slab now consists of web and slab. This is the web portion of the beam and this is the slab. Both, this, the, both these things put together is known as the T beam. So, now after having understood this, you can just imagine the beam to have a span of 8 meters. So, now let us once again go to the problem and list out whatever the data given there. The data given there is the effective span 8 meters, the spacing of the T beam 3 meters, the slab thickness D f equal to 150 mm, F C k is 20 Newton per mm square, live load on the slab 4 kilo Newton per meter square. Whatever the live load is there, it is going to act on the slab and this live load acting on the slab gets transferred to the beam. The type of steel is F E 415 therefore, F Y value equal to 415 Newton per mm square. So, now another important thing which you have to understand here is in addition to this live load that is acting on the slab, there is a dead load, there is a self weight of the slab that has to be considered. So, the total load is nothing but the self weight of the slab whatever the load that gets realized because of the self weight of the slab plus the live load on that. Both this added together you are going to get the total load and this load is going to act on this beam. So, now I am going to write a one dimensional sketch where I am going to show you the span as well as the load acting. So, your T beam is going to be now represented by a single line like this. The span is 8 meters. Wherever you take the section, at that section, you are going to have the T section. So, now our job is to first of all find out the total load acting on this beam. So, first step I think everybody is clear, we forget about all other things, just try to note down whatever the data given there. I think everyone has noted these things and now let us go to the next step. As usual any design whether it is a simple support beam, a cantilever beam or a T beam or an L beam, the very first step here is to always fix the value of the depth of the beam. What is the procedure we are going to follow for this? This small d is going to be fixed based on the value of L by D ratio. So far I have not talked anything about 16, but you have the liberty of choosing this as 16. 
L by D equal to 7 for cantilever, L by D is equal to 24, SSB and L by D equal to 26 for continuous. So, here I have chosen the value of L by D as how much? 16. It does not, it should not exceed 20, it is simply supported, therefore, I have taken this L by D equal to 16. If you do not like this, you go for L by D equal to 17. If you do not like that, go for 19. Can you go for L by D equal to 40? No. Can you go for L by D equal to 100? No. The IS code clearly mentions that the value of L by D should be somewhere around 20. That is why for this particular case, I have chosen because of its simply supported, because it is a simply supported beam, I have chosen this L by D equal to 16. Once you take this L by D equal to 16, you are going to calculate the value of small d, the effective depth through this ratio. You know the value of L, you know the value of L from that substituting there you are going to get the value of d as usual. Add this cover to this to get the overall depth. Now, the T beam parameters are listed, can just go through that small d equal to how much? 500 mm, capital D equal to 550 five mm, width of the web is 300 mm, whatever so far I was calling as the width of the beam in the other beams. So, this is the web and the width of the web normally denoted by BWO and you can assume this and this shall be assumed in this case as 300 mm. In the earlier problems where I had considered a rectangular section, I was taking this B as 230 mm. Now, I am going to choose this BW as 300 mm. I know the slab thickness as D F, I know the slab thickness as 150 mm, which here afterwards is going to be called as D suffix F that is 150 mm. Note carefully, note that the slab acts as the part of the beam, the flange of the beam is nothing but the slab. So, now the next job is to calculate the total load that are acting on the slab. Earlier I mentioned that whatever the load acting on the slab gets transferred to the beam. Therefore, you should now try to find out the total load acting on the slab. So, first of all the self weight of the slab has to be calculated. I am going to consider 1 meter by 1 meter area multiplied by 0.15. So, that now I get the volume of this multiplied by density you are going to get the self weight of the slab per meter square. These are series of beams of 8 meters and the one which we are interested in designing. So, now slab load, we assume that half of this load goes to this, another half of this slab load goes to this, all this shaded portion is nothing but the slab and the contribution or the load on the beam is because of this load transferred from the two shaded portions shown here. This is your beam. So, whatever the self weight is there 0.15 into 1 into 1 into 25 gives per meter length slab load. So, this is 3 by 2 and this is 3 by 2. On either side we have the slab width as 3 by 2. This load goes to this beam, therefore, now the self weight of the slab, I am writing this 
sulfate of the slab or the loads on the beam because of the sulfate of the slab and that is nothing but equal to 0.15 into 25 into 3 that comes to 11.25 meters that 3 is nothing but half of the slab on this side and half of the slab on the other side. Next we have the floor finish 0.6 kilo newton per meter square into 3 then we have the self of the rib rib has got a depth of 0.4 meters how did you get this overall depth minus the flange depth gives us the depth of the rib thickness is 0 0.3 25 into 1 so you are going to get a value like 3 kilo newton per meter run I think you are taking on all these things next we have the plaster finishes 0.45 total dead load 16.5 kilo newton per meter run next we have the live load so that is nothing but equal to 4 into 3 that comes to 12 kilo newton per meter run and that is going to be factored and we are going to get the total factored load as 30.75 kilo newton per meter run. So, once you know the value of the factored load you are going to find out the value of the moment MO as usual W L square by 8 30 points and find to 8 square by 8 that is 246 kilo Newton meter you are going to calculate the shear. These two steps had already been taught to you and these were followed in the earlier problems also. So, there is no speciality about the method of calculating MU and VO. Next, you are going to calculate the value of the effectivity of the flange. If you open this code, you are going to get a formula there where it says that the effective width is lesser of the two values given below. Number 1, BF equal to L0 by 6 plus BW plus 6 times DF where L0 is the distance between the 0 moments in this case it is 8 meters distance between the two supports plus 0.3 the web width plus 6 times the flange thickness you are going to get the value of BFS 2.53 meters that is 2530 mm the center to center between the ribs is 2.7 meters. So, the lesser of these two values is going to be picked up as the value of the flange width BF. Then you are going to find out the value of the limiting moment of resistance the code gives this formula. So, here you are going to substitute BF then DF and find out the value of the limiting moment of resistance and now your value of MO or the value of MU in this case is lesser than MUF and you have to find out the depth of the neutral axis and in this case we have got the value of XU the depth of the neutral axis to be lesser than the flange thickness already Professor Suresh might have taught to you how to calculate the value of the depth of the neutral axis. So, calculate this and uh, compare and this has been calculated here and it has been got that MU to be less than the limiting moment of resistance and XU to be less than DF. So, now once you get this the next step is to find out the reinforcements equating that to MU lim the earlier whatever value we have got equated this to MU lim and then find out the value of D as usual no speciality in that later on you can find out the value of the reinforcements that is by using the equation given in the code, but the only change here is instead of B you are going to use BF. Same equation since an under reinforced section by the same equation whatever earlier I had used. So, given in the annexure C annexure G. So, using that equation solving we get the value of AST. A very, very simple quadratic equation. So, solving this 
you are going to get the value of EST that comes to 1417 mm square. What is the next step? Choose 25 mm diameter I not shown the detailed uh, steps here because already you know all these things several times I have worked out. So, the next step is to calculate the number of bars required for which you have to assume the dia of the bar to be used. Here 25 mm diameter bar has been used area of 1 bar 590 mm square total steel required divided by 490 mm square you are going to get the number of bars of 25 mm here it has been got as 3 bars. As usual face as usual use 2 hanger bars of 12 mm on the compression face. Next tow V shall be calculated tow V is nothing but V u divided by B w into D. Be careful it is not B f it is B w. Hope everyone has understood this. Now, we are gone for the design of shear reinforcements after having calculated the number of bars to be used in the beam. The next step is to calculate the shear reinforcements for which you know that V u is nothing but the support reaction and has been already calculated in the very first step itself. And then V u divided by B w into D gives us the value of tau V the nominal shear stress acting on the beam at the most critical section that is at the support. B w is 300 small d is 500 so that you get tau V as 0.82 Newton per mm square. As usual calculate the value of P t. So, for this value of P t for the grade of concrete to be used referring table 19 pick up the value of tau C. So, this value of tau V is greater than tau C. You can observe that the nominal shear stress acting on the beam is greater than the permissible shear stress therefore, shear reinforcements are required. Now, we have to design the shear reinforcement and provide. So, please try to calculate the value of V u s V u s is the balance shear force for which the design has to be done and that is nothing but equal to the nominal shear force V u minus the shear force taken up by the concrete V u minus tau c into B w into D gives us the value of V u s. So, this has come to 33 kilo newtons. So, now again I am going to decide to use 8 mm diameter tool x stirrups. So, the moment I use vertical stirrups of 8 mm diameter tool leg, I am going to use this formula as per the code. There are 3 set of formula given in the code as far as the shear design is concerned. Number 1 is for the inclined stirrups and number 2 for the vertical stirrups, number 3 it is for the bent up bars with stirrups. Since I am using vertical stirrups, I am going to use this particular formula which is given in the code. So, I am going to substitute F y A s v v u s and also the effective depth. So, once I calculate the value of spacing I am going to now simply compare this with the maximum spacing that is allowed as per the code. This time I have got a very high value like 547 mm I cannot keep this, but unless I check this I cannot say that. So, the next thing is checking for maximum spacing of vertical shear reinforcements. The spacing shall not exceed 0.75 d or 300 mm whichever is less. So, this time I got a value like 375 and 300 mm therefore, my value of this is 547 mm, but I am not going to use that 547 mm because the code clearly says that spacing shall not exceed 0.75 d or 300 mm whichever is less. Therefore, I have now decided to use 8 mm diameter bar 2 leg vertical syrup set 300 mm center to center throughout the length of the beam. 
So as usual, the next step is to check for the deflection. Whenever you want to calculate, whenever you want to check for the deflection, the first step is to get the value of PT. Why do I need this PT? I need this to refer this figure for. Then I have to calculate PC. Okay, same same steps whatever I have followed earlier. You know that allowable L by D equal to basic L by D into M T into M C into M F. You can observe this formula given there. Allowable L by D equal to, which is also called as L by D max. That is the maximum of maximum value of L by D allowed. L by D basic into M T into M C into M F. Have you observed this? So once you have understood this formula, now referring these four, five, six figures, get the value of M T, M C, and M F. M T has been got as two for the amount of for the P T value and F S value. You have picked up the value. Of, you can pick up the value of M T as two from figure four. M C is one because no compression reinforcement and Figure six gives us the value of MF. This time, this is the only case where we have the value of MF other than one. It is the reduction factor. So BW by BF has to be calculated. What is the value of BW? It is 300 mm. The value of BF is 2530. So the ratio is 0.118. For this ratio of B W by B F equal to 0.118, referring figure six, you are going to get the value of M F. Hope everyone has substituted this. So the maximum allowable L B D is nothing but equal to basic L B D into M T into M C into M F. So this has come to 25.6, but the actual L B D provided is 8000 by 500. What is this 8000? It is the span of the beam. D is the effective span. So actual L B D provided is 16, 8000 by 500, whereas the allowable L B D is 25.6. Therefore, we when when this value of actual L B D is lesser than the allowable L B D, we say that the deflection is satisfied. One can observe the reinforcement details. This. Detailing of the reinforcement will be taught to you in next semester. A separate subject is there to sketch the reinforcement, but right now, please try to understand how the sketch has to be done, how the detailing of the reinforcement has to be done. You can observe the longitudinal section given here, which is three of twenty-five mm tar at the bottom, then two of twelve mm anchor or hanger bars at the top, eight. At 300 centimeter center stirrups, with the cross section showing all the details like DF, flange width, etc. So that is the end of this problem. Where you sometimes like this, you may be be asked to sketch the reinforcement. So therefore, I have sketched the details of the reinforcement also in this particular problem. Almost in all the problems, you are going to sketch in the same fashion. The last. Problem of the design of beams. The last problem which I am going to work out in this last class. Please go through this problem and try to note down the problem that is given there. Design a L beam. What is this L beam? I am going to explain it. First, please note down the problem. Design a L beam for an office floor to suit the following data: clear span equal to 8 meters, thickness of the flange 150 mm, same as in the case of T beams, live load 4 kilonewton per meter square, spacing of beams same as in the earlier problem. I need not once again explain this. Different beams that are supporting the slab: FCK 20, F5 4 1 5. Width of the support is 300 mm. Here, a column is supporting the beam, and the beams are L beams. So now, please go through this, see this sketch. 
what is this? This is your L beam. Why do I call this as L beam? You can see the L shape of this beam like this and further you observe that the flange is existing on only one side of the web. Whereas in the other cases or in the other problem, the slab was existing on both the sides of the beam whereas here the slab is existing only on one side of the beam. Therefore, it is known as a L beam. So, we are going to design this L beam and here I am going to show you the web has got a width of BW, DF is the flange thickness, BF is the flange width. What else remaining? We have got the width of the web as BW and this is the depth of the web. So, this is the beam which we are now interested. Please note that L beam is a peculiar beam which is also sub which is subjected to bending and shear and in addition it is subjected to torsion. This is the only case where whatever the problems are discussed in that this is the only case where the torsion is acting. So, this is a beam subjected to bending, torsion and shear forces. Therefore, I am going to assume a very large depth for which now I have chosen a ratio of L by D equal to 12. Earlier I started this rectangular beam I assume the depth of the rectangular beam is L by D equal to from L by D equal to 20. Then for T beam I went for 16. Now I have gone for 12. No problem at all. You can choose your own value of L by D ratio and keeping in view that ratio given in the code for simply support beam as 20. Somewhere around 20 one can simply pick up the value of L by D. By experience you will be able to judge this. Already I have covered several values, several types of, I uh, use several values of L by D depending upon the problem. Once you know this, once you have selected the value of L by D, the next step is to get the value of the effective depth D, which is 8000 by 12 that has come to 666 mm. So, adopt 700 mm as the effective depth. What is the overall depth now? Adding the cover to this effective depth D you are going to get the overall depth of the section which in this case is nothing but equal to 750 mm. The width of the, width of the web is 300 mm. That's all, that one also has to be assumed. Then the effective span shall be calculated. The effective span is the least of the following that is the center to center of the supports or clear span plus effective depth whichever is lesser. So, in this case the center to center distance the supports is 8 plus 0.3 that comes to 8.3 meters clear span plus effective depth is 8.7 meters the lesser of the two values is 8.3 meters therefore, I am going to pick up the value of the effective span as 8.3 meters. In the T beam directly the value of the effective span was given that is why this part was not discussed. Now, I am going to transfer these loads from the slab to the beam. Self fed the slab as usual I am not going to explain it that 3 meter is there 0.15 into 2.5 into sorry 0.15 into 25 into 0.5 into 3 that is equal to 11.25 floor finish as usual 1.8 then self weight or the rib same thing as you have done in the T beam then we have the live load 4 into 0.5 into 3 what is this 3 this is nothing but the contribution half of the slab on one side and the half of the slab on the other side that comes to 6, the total working load is 17 kilometer per meter run which is going to be factored and taken as 
17 into 1.5 will be the factored load. Then you are going to calculate the value of the effective flange width BF. Earlier for T beam I had used L0 by 6 plus BW plus 6 times DF, but this time for L beam the flange width is given by a different formula in the code. So, I have picked up that particular formula given the code and I am going to write this as 8000 by 12 plus BW 300 plus 3 into 150 that comes to 1442 mm. Then we have the center to center distance between the ribs that is 1650 mm the lesser of the two value is going to be lesser of the two values is going to be picked up as the effective flange width. Please understand that effective flange width means it is the flange or the slab part of the slab which is effective in carrying the stresses whole of the slab will not participate in the action only a part of this or this effective flange that has been calculated that width is going to participate in that resisting the stresses. So, now I have covered I have taken the working load and then multiplied by 1.5 to get the factored load. So, at the support so far I had not discussed anything about the support moment in case of the L beam where it is subject where it is supported on columns at the supports we have this moment. So, far I was discussing only the moments at the mid span except for the cantilevers. Now, this support moment is going to be calculated and also we are going to calculate the mid span moment. Two moments are going to be calculated. The first moment is at the support which is 17 into 8.3 square by 12. At the support moment please assume this value as W square by 12 as you had assumed the mid span moment as 8. In the mid span normally we will take as we take the moment as double square by 8, but in the support it will be double square by 12. Please note down this and here afterwards take the support moment as double square by 12. In fact, one can do the moment distribution or the analysis and arrive at the exact value of the moment to be taken at the support, but right now at this level assume this as double square by 12. Next, we have this view. No change at all, that is uh, as usual. Whatever the support reaction is there, that is going to be your value of the maximum shear force that has come to 106 kilo Newton. Then calculate the moment at the mid span, it is W square by 24. So, the mid span moment gets reduced because of the continuity. In the continuous beam which you are going to study, you will understand this in a better manner. After having calculated this values of the bending moments and the support in the mid span, we have to now calculate the torsional moment. How does this torsional moment act there? This torsional moment acts because of the load acting, the dead load of the slab and live load acting on the slab. No rib self weight has to be considered here, rib self weight shall not be considered. So, whatever the load that is getting realized on the beam because of the load on the slab shall be taken. So, I am going to deduct the self weight of the rib and then calculate the working load that is getting realized on the beam because of the load acting on the slab that has come to 12.5 kilo Newton per meter run and then total ultimate load has been calculated note that the total load is 12.5 kilo Newton per meter run into 8.3 1.5 as usual to factor that that is 156 kilo Newtons this is at the support so half of that gets supported that gets transferred to one support the other half gets to the other support therefore, we get 78 kilo newtons and now I am going to calculate the eccentricity there 
the eccentricity is half the flange width minus half the support thickness that comes to 571 mm. So, ultimate torsional moment T u T suffix u is total load there multiplied by this eccentricity that comes to 78 into 0.571 that comes to 44.5 kilo Newtons. So, we have now calculated the torsional moment T u the bending moment M u, but whenever you are dealing with this bending moment design in L beams, so you have to design this L beam for equivalent bending moment which is given by the formula M e 1 equal to M u plus M t. Where, where did I get this? I got this from class 41.4.2 where he clearly mentions that M e 1 is nothing but equal to M u plus M t. What is this M t? That is the moment that develops at the support because of the torsional moment T u that is again given in the formula. This is the formula that is there to calculate the value of M t 1 plus d by b by 1.7 where d is the overall depth, b w is the flange width. So, T u is the one which I had earlier calculated that is 44.5 substituting all these things now you have got the value of M t. So, the equivalent bending moment is nothing but M e 1 equal to M u plus M t. I have just now calculated the value of M t earlier I had calculated the value of M u. So, now you get the equivalent bending moment M e 1 as 239 kilo Newton meter this is the moment for which the support section has to be designed. Now, we have V what is this V? This is the equivalent shear which is nothing but the function of the actual shear force plus the shear that develops because of the torsion. V e equal to V u plus 1.6 times T u by B. All these relationships are given in the code. Do not worry how this has been derived, but anyhow you should use this to arrive at the value of the equivalent shear and your now your support section has to be designed for a moment of M e 1 and an equivalent bending moment M e 1 and equivalent shear V. So, I am going to now first of all design this support section ok. Before that I am going to calculate M u lame the limiting moment of resistance the formula given in equation equation G 1.11 B in the code the simplified version is also given here. This is nothing but the one which I had earlier used as x u max by d into 1 minus 0 0.4 to x u max by d f c k by d square the same formula has been simplified and written. I am going to compare this M u M e 1 with I am going to compare this M e 1 with M u lim. So, this is lesser than M e 1 is lesser than M u lim therefore, it is an under info section. So, for under info section I am going to now calculate the amount of steel required using the equation G 11 one point B and also I have to check for the depth as usual as we had done in the earlier problem and now you please calculate the amount of steel that has been got as 1056.3 mm square choosing 20 mm diameter bars the number of bars of 20 mm the number of bars of 22 mm diameter is calculated and it is equal to 3. Now, coming to the mid section there is a moment of how much 73 kilo Newton meter and you are going to calculate as usual the number of bars to be provided in the mid section. Later on you have to check with this AST min and AST max ok. Same steps whatever we had earlier worked out and then the most important thing here is about the side phase reinforcement. According to the class 26.51.7 of the IS, the side phase reinforcement of 0.1 percent of web area has to be provided whenever the member is subjected to torsion and when the depth of the web exceeds 450 mm. So, here since the depth of the beam is exceeding 450 mm, 
since the beam is subjected to torsion, we are going to provide the side phase reinforcement and this side phase reinforcement is nothing but equal to 0.1% of the web. You can observe this area of reinforcement is 0.1 percent. So, we got this as 225 mm square therefore, I am going to provide 4 numbers of 10 mm diameter bars as the side phase reinforcement. Then we have to again as usual like any other beam this beam also should be checked for shear. The same steps has to be followed. So, shear reinforcement shall be calculated as usual, but here be careful it is not the tau V which you are going to calculate instead you are going to calculate the equivalent shear tau V E already I have shown how to calculate tau V V E from V E you are going to calculate tau V E. So, V E divided by B W into D gives us the value of tau V E this time it is coming to 1.16 Newton per mm square earlier it was V U, but here it is the shear acting is a function of the shear because of the torsion and the regular shear. So, equivalent shear has to be considered and here the equivalent shear is V e. So, I got a value of tau V e as 1.16 Newton per mm square pick up the value of tau C from table 19 compare this with tau V e. So, in this case tau V e is exceeding tau C or tau C is less than tau V e therefore, shear reinforcements are required. But I cannot use that simple formula to calculate S V. There is another set of another formula given for calculating the spacing. Earlier I was calculating the spacing as 0.87 F I etcetera, but here a different formula is there which takes into account the torsion moment T u as well as the shear force V u. Twice two formula are there which are shown here. One can observe this. So, calculate S V once by using this formula and once using this formula. Please note that there is a term, there is a there is this D 1 which is nothing but equal to overall depth minus 2 covers that is 650 mm. B 1 is again total width minus 2 covers gives us the value of B 1. So, one has to substitute the value of B 1 and D 1 and use this and to get the value of this S V. Solving with this we get 167 mm and 160 mm. So, I am going to choose the spacing as 160 mm. This time I use 20 m, 10 mm diameter bars for which the area is pi by 4 into 10 square. If it is 2 legged, it is 2 into pi by 4 into 10 square. So, now we have got the spacing as 160 mm. As usual, that checking for spacing has to be done 0.75 times d or 300 mm, and this is lesser than that. Therefore, this value of S V has been picked up and it has been given as and it has been used as the spacing. Now, the last step here is the check for deflection control. No speciality at all, whatever I had followed earlier, same thing. <coughs> calculate P T, calculate F S, go for this figure 4, pick up the value of M T this is coming to 1.0 compression reinforcement whatever the compression reinforcement given there has to be taken then calculate P C go to that figure 5 and then get the value of M C then figure 6 this is the only difference which I had shown you in the T beam also reduction factor get the value of M F from figure 6 and now go for this allowable L by D which is a function of the basic L by D multiplied by M T, M C and M F. The basic L by D is written there then you are going to calculate the allowable L by D basic L by D is 20 multiplied by 1.2 multiplied by 1.1 multiplied by 0.8 you are going to get the maximum value of L by D or allowable L by D. So, compare this with that of the actual L by D 
which is 8300 by 700. So that is 11.85 and this is lesser than the allowable D hence we say that the deflection is under control. Next we have the reinforcement details as usual we are going to write the sketch. So I think with this the problem is over and my portions so far whatever covered is about the design of beams as well as the serviceability limit states. My portion whatever I have covered is unit 3 and unit 4. Hope everyone has understood this but the better way to learn more about this is to go back to the room or home and then simply work some problems. So any doubts are there you can contact me and I think that is the end of my class. So I taught you how to design a L beam, a T beam, a rectangular beam, single reinforced, a cantilever beam, a doubly reinforced beam. So for before this I have given some introduction about the definition of beams, types of beams, then I mentioned some practical requirements to be used for, to be adopted for the design of beams, then I also discussed about the general serviceability requirements and later on I worked out some problems to check for the, uh, to calculate the deflection or to satisfy the deflection criteria and the cracking criteria. In the deflection control, I I have explained two methods whereas in the cracking control also I have explained two methods. I think that is my the things that those are the things which I had covered. So with this I think I thank you all for this and also thank the VTU authorities for having provided such a nice thing so that it is uh, helpful to all the students throughout the state. So once again I thank you very much and further these things are going to be continued by my colleagues. Thank you.